What's up, vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and it's Fresh Build Friday. That's right, it's that time of the week again where we get you ready for the weekend with a brand new coil build. All right, guys, it is Friday and I am ready to go. I hope you guys are too. So today I've got something really cool for you guys. I just got this in the mail today. This is the RX Machina by Wismec. It is a mechanical 2700 mod and it's the first mechanical 2700 mod that I own. So I really, really, really wanted to do a build on it. And I thought, why not, you know, kind of show you guys a variation on a theme with this one here. Today I'm gonna to be doing a pretty simple flavor slash cloud build. This one in particular, the way I'm doing it is really good for both and uh, I really like it on a mechanical device. However, of course, there are plenty of variations. So if you wanted to do this on a regulated device, then you can swap out a wire type for another wire type or whatever you want to do. Anyways, I am rambling. Let's get to the build. Let's go ahead and grab our mod, our wick, our eddy, our wire, our juice, all that good stuff. Let's go down to the close-up view and build it up. All right, guys, so it's Friday. It's time to get funky with some wire. We've got some Coilology fused Clapton wire. Uh, this is pre-made fused Clapton wire. Uh, that's what I'm gonna be using today, but feel free to use your own if you wanted to, or pretty much any other wire type for the flavor wire, so to speak. But next wire we're gonna be using today is some of this Mad Rabbit stainless steel. Of course, any brand stainless steel, or even if you wanted to use Nichrome and Canthal will work as well. But I really want this stuff to be the, you know, kind of the kicker with this one here. So I would highly recommend using stainless. So um, actually we'll, we'll start off with this fused Clapton wire first and foremost. We'll take about, uh, foot or so. I probably need a little bit less than a foot, but let's just see here. Let's just loop this thing back through. And then we have our three millimeter bit as per usual. So let's just go ahead and wrap a simple coil. So let's see, we'll do five wraps of the fused Clapton. So just do that. One, two, three, four, and five, crank that stuff around, and you got yourself a five wrap there. Pretty darn easy to do. And next thing I'm gonna do is take about another foot or so of this stuff here, uh, the stainless steel, and cut ourselves off a piece, just like that. And now the fun starts. So what you're gonna do now is basically, you can put it through the hole if you wanted to, or you could just hold it on the outside. Doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm just gonna start the coil off all the way on the left-hand side of what we already started wrapping here. And just press that wire in between that fuse Clapton. So just really give it a lot of tension with this one. And uh, let's see, just one more wrap in between there. And then we have our framed up sort of uh, fused Clapton wire. So pretty good stuff there. So this is what we have so far. We are looking pretty good. So let's just go ahead and wrap ourselves another coil. So there we go, we got two coils ready to go, ready to be installed, and yeah, I know the leads look a little bit raggedy right now, but just wait until we get these bad boys installed, you'll see just how good they look. So let's go ahead and bring in our Recoil Rebel, that's what we're gonna be building on today. And the first thing we're gonna do is just grab the cleaner of the two coils and just get it into the right spot here. So we want the higher lead going towards the outside. I learned my lesson quite some time ago about how to build on a Rebel or a Recoil rather. So <laughs> there we go. Let's just uh, find that spot right there. Just, oh, maybe this one's gotta be loosened up a little bit more. And there we go. I try my hardest to keep that parallel wire um, on the outside, that uh, 24 gauge. I try really hard to keep that on the outside because I feel like uh, it just stays a lot neater when you have it just kind of in line. So I'm going to seat it pretty darn close to the edge of the deck or the actual posts rather. And what I'm going to do now is find my screwdriver. There we go. And I'm going to lock in the negative post, just leaving a tiny, tiny bit of room so that we can kind of nudge it over. So once we do that, we lock it in just like that. 
we're going to take our screwdriver and actually this screwdriver is the same diameter as the three millimeter bit so we could just kind of nudge it over like that and that gets our, our lead kind of nudged over towards the center there makes our coil nice and even right there in the middle which is exactly what I was looking for and get that pretty close to the deck as well if you want to you can bring in your pliers and just snug it up a little bit if you want to just like that and I think we're in pretty good shape so we're just going to tighten that down as well so already our coil is sitting pretty on here so I'm just going to actually clean up the excess wire so let's just snip it off whoa watch your eyes during this stage of course and next up I'm actually going to trim up some of these leads here real quick just to make them nice and neater um, just because it looks like a, a big mess right now so I think we should clean them up just a little bit there before we install them so there we go just again doing the same thing repeating this same step again here and slides in pretty nice and neat organize our wire a little bit tighten down the negative just like that nudge our coil just like that everything's falling into place here ladies and gentlemen and tighten up the positive side as well alright so now that that's pretty much centered and in place and as organized as I'm gonna get it in this stage I'm just gonna go ahead and clip these leads Well, all right, guys, as you can see here, this is reading 0.08, which is pretty darn low on the scale. But you know what? For today's build, that's going to be just fine by me. So let's just go ahead and switch it over to the other mode here. And now we are ready to fire these coils up and give it a little bit of heat. Honestly, it's probably going to jump up a little bit by the time we're done. But let's just go ahead and give these coils a little bit of heat. You can start seeing the color come out. Actually, let's uh, let's see if I can get you a good shot of that color right now. Hopefully, you guys can see that a little bit there. You can see the coils really coming out. Some uh, really nice blues and purples and golds. And ah, I absolutely love stainless steel just for that reason. But let's just give them a little bit more heat here. Hopefully, they fire up pretty evenly just work out any minor hot spots or anything like that just by giving them a quick little strum and uh, just be gentle obviously you don't want to you know really crank on these coils too hard but there we go it just jumped up to 0.1 ohms it's kind of where I, I figured this build would be which is just good uh, for me it's perfect in my book so yeah they're already looking pretty darn good to me so just you know a little bitty more, a little bit more strumming. I think we'll be all set here. Well, even a little bit higher now, 0.11. But yeah, those coils are glowing really, real nice. I think that's all the heat that we're going to have to give them in this little part here. So let's just go ahead and wick it.
So I've been getting a lot of questions about what is with the lighter. Now, a lighter is not usually something you would think of for a vape toolkit, but uh, I've been using this technique for a few weeks now, actually probably a few months by now, and it seems to work for me. Now, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of debate in the comments. Figured I'd give you guys a little bit more clarification. I've covered this before in a couple of their videos, but I really feel like uh, I should share it again with you guys because it's a trick that works for me personally. I mean, if you don't feel comfortable doing it, then don't do it. But otherwise, um, I mean, I'm just going to do my thing. So with that, all you have to do, uh, basically towards the end here, we just saturated our cotton. We're ready to get going. But the last thing I do before I, you know, pulse fire and test it is I actually light my cotton on fire. Now, what this will do is actually burn off any excess little hairs or anything that's going on and also speed up the break-in time. So with that, it's kind of a win-win in my book as long as you play it safe and you don't really pulse it for too long. So anyways, let's stop talking about it and just do it here. Um, all I have to do for this is just fire up the coils for a few seconds and just ignite them and it should just kind of cause a big fireball and then you blow it right out afterwards. You don't want to leave it on fire for, you know, any length of time. Just basically ignite it and blow it right out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this going. And that's it. That's it, guys. All you have to do for that little technique there is just what you saw there. Light them up and blow them right out. It really instantly just gets rid of all those little fibers and right away you have a uh, coil that's ready to go. So let's go ahead and give these a proper fire here real quick. One thing I'm, I am going to do is just give it a quick redrip just to make sure it's really, really saturated. So there we go. Let's fire the button and see some vapor. Oh yeah, that's pretty. That is definitely flavor country. I guess let's go ahead and go back to the main screen, have a quick vape on this thing, and we'll talk about it some more. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the build. Now let's talk about the coils that we just put in our Recoil Rebel. And first of all, let me just say that I built this very, very specifically for a mechanical device. Now, if you wanted to use this with a regulated device, then I personally would swap out the stainless steel wire for either Nichrome or Canthal, but it is totally up to you, whatever you guys want to use. This build came out to 0.11 ohms, which means it is technically going to fire on pretty much any device that can handle over 200 watts nowadays. And with that, the fuse clap and wire that we use today by Coilology is two strands of 28 gauge wrapped in 36 gauge Nichrome 80. So we have Nichrome for the fuse clapped and wire for the flavor wire, if you will, and stainless steel for the cloud wire, if you will. And that combination there is really, really good on a mechanical device. Anyways, let's get on to the categories. My first category is the heat. The heat on this one is a little bit on the warm side. Now I am using the standard two hole cap. I'm not using the four hole cap for the Recoil Rebel, so that can definitely attribute to some of the heat factor there. But then again, this is the one that I tend to prefer. So with this setup here, if you wanted a little bit cooler of a draw, then I would recommend using a wider open airflow. If you are doing this on a goon or something like that, you're going to have no problem with airflow whatsoever. But personally, I like a little tiny bit of restriction and also the smoothness of the airflow is just a dream on this thing. So as far as that goes, the heat factor is kind of on the warmer side depending on which cap you use. And for my second category, which is the ramp up and ramp down time, the ramp up time on this one is very, very short. Now, I chose stainless steel wire for a very specific purpose for this particular coil. Now, with the stainless steel wire, it's very low resistance and it heats up really quickly. So basically what you're doing with this one here is the 24 gauge wire really just starts ramping up the heat factor and that also warms up the fuse clapton that it's kind of uh, holding together. So with that, the ramp up time on this one is very short for the amount of wire that we have in this coil here. Let's go ahead and take a drag off of this thing and we'll check out the ramp down time. 
So the ramp down time is short as well, which is exactly what I wanted. It is 100% perfect in my book. You get three seconds of sizzle and then it stops dead in its track. So with that, very, very short ramp down time on this one, which means it's not really holding in too much of that heat with this coil here, but you still get a huge cloud out of it and plenty of flavor as well. And for my third category, which is the difficulty of this build, this one was a breeze for me, especially since I used that pre-made spool of wire. But then again, I really don't find it that much of a challenge to wrap some Fuse Claptons, but with that, for those of you that might be struggling with Fuse Claptons by hand, or you just are, you know, kind of lazy like myself, I really prefer using the pre-made spools of wire or even pre-made coils in certain circumstances and just kind of stage it with that outer round wire, and it's just that much easier. So as far as that goes, whatever is the easiest technique for you to use is the right way to do it in my book. And for my fourth and final category, which is the flavor on this build, today I'm vaping this Nashi V2 by Juice Guys, and let me tell you, this stuff is absolutely amazing. I've gone through bottle after bottle of it and I never get sick of it. It's a caramel and Asian pear blend and I usually don't go for the more savory kind of flavors or desserty flavors, but the fruitiness factor to this one just really, really does it for me. And then you get that caramel kick and it is absolutely delicious. But as far as this particular build's flavor goes, this one is really, really good. You have to try it out for all you flavor junkies out there because uh, the round wire kind of acts as a stage sort of heating. When the round wire gets going, then it heats up the fuse Clapton wire and in turn, you just get this blast of flavor. So after the first about second or so of, uh, you know, of your draw, you'll just notice the flavor just kind of increase exponentially and then you'll get this really lovely flavorful vape. And on the exhale, you just get this massive cloud and a ton of flavor as well. So really, really happy with the flavor on this one. It's definitely my go-to flavor build. So that about does it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Don't forget to click that little notification bell right next to the subscribe button if you want to be alerted whenever I upload videos. Big shout out to you guys in the notification squad. Also, leave me some comments in the box below. I'd love to hear your thoughts all about this build or the RX Machina or anything else you guys want to know about. I'd love to hear your questions down there. Also, check out the advocacy and my social media links right down there in the description below. You can also grab yourself a Daily Vape TV sweatshirt in the t-shirt store. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, and as always, vape on!